A little bit of an unusual segue on this one. Uh, to quote the um, uh, Australian poet and, well, let's call him the bard, Slim Dusty, uh, a certain song from Slim Dusty about the, um, the pub with no beer. Well, you may have heard that song, but can you imagine a, a bank with no money? A similar type of vibe from the pub with no beer to the bank with no money. What on earth is happening in Australia? To find out, we're joined by our Australian correspondent, Craig Harman. Uh, Craig, kia ora, thanks for your time today. Hey, good morning, Andrew. Great to see you again, mate, and talk to you. Now, uh, it is a little bit unusual to have a bank with no money, but this is what the Macquarie Bank is doing. Is this, totally. Uh, is this what I mean? It's the first time in Australia, but this might be a world first as well. It seems counterintuitive to me, Craig. Well, I think if you if you think about it, you know, banks have been making it harder and harder to bank money, actual cash, for a long time. Yeah. In fact, we as a church, funny enough, uh, Andrew, we, in New Zealand, um, we've given up taking cash. And the reason we have is because our bank, the ANZ in this case, has made it so hard. We only get a tiny amount of cash anyway. Most yeah. people deal electronically these days, and particularly since COVID. But I think we're getting, you know, 60 or $70 a week, and it can cost you 60 or $70 to bank the 60 or $70 because the high jumping you have to go through to bank oh, it is so goodness. high. So we as a church actually gave it up. So Macquarie Bank have taken the next step and said, actually, we're not even we're not even giving you the option now. In about five days, I think it's Friday this week, yeah. you won't be able to do cash anymore with Macquarie Bank. Neither can you get it in nor can you give it in. Uh, sorry, neither can you give, give it in nor can you get it out. Um, which is kind of funny, but I think it's the first step toward central bank digital currencies myself. Yep. I just yep. think bank by bank are just going to roll over and eventually, ta-da, there'll be a digital Australian dollar, mate, with a kangaroo on it. Um, I don't know how you do a kangaroo. A digital which kangaroo. Zero digits, but yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. It'll so be... So the currency, it'll be the currency that never goes backwards, mate. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe it hops backwards. Hey, um, I mean, how is this going to work? Because, I mean, a, a bank that no longer... Uh, accepts legal tender. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, there is some uh, some technicalities that they're jumping through on that one. But are they going to not have ATMs at their banks? You can't no. just go to an ATM. No. And no, no ATMs, no ATMs, mate. I think um, no, that's it. You, you, I mean, you may be. I think in fairness, you may be able to use someone else's ATMs, but they're going to wind down all of that. And um, yeah, they're just going cashless and. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the implication is. I don't bank with Macquarie myself. Um, and I actually don't use a heck of a lot of cash either, but cash is convenient sometimes. Um, but, yeah, I don't tend to use piles of it myself, so I'm not sure how how frustrated I'd be about it. I, I can see scenarios, where, though, where, I mean, I'm like a lot of people, I'm certainly frightened of the idea of uh, central banks um, having that kind of power over your life. You know, most people tied to a social credit system idea now that, you know, if you decide to, uh, you know, throw your lunchbox out the window of your car while you're driving, um, you know, the bank might decide you're a bad citizen and shut your bank account down wow. or, you know, or the government says you're not allowed to go on a holiday anymore. You know, whatever. Um, in the 80s. It's that sort of problem. In the 80s, Craig, uh, Craig, we called it the mark of the beast. You know, this cashless system. Yeah, this, is, like this is the way it's, it's exactly going. exactly what it is, do, yeah. Do you see it as, I mean... Well, you know, we... I mean, let, let's face it, mate, we, we've got BlackRock, for example, in America talking yeah. about the tokenization of everything. Sort of everything will be transacted by kind of like a equivalent of a Bitcoin. You and I will have a digital identity. We'll trade everything that way. I mean, it is kind of, you know, what the Book of Revelation says. But, hey, you know, the world has to end somehow. So Yeah. And, and hey, Macquarie Bank is not the Antichrist in this regard. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm a parochial. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm parochial, Craig, but, but honestly, it's not that much of a loss. Australia's got such ugly money, just saying. No, nowhere near as pretty as the money we have well, here in New Zealand. I'd get rid of it too if I was Australian. Well, you know how you know you're in Australia, though, mate, because all the money has to be different coloured so we can pick yeah. it apart. I mean, the Americans, it's all green, doesn't seem to bother them, you know. We have to have different colours here. Yeah, I mean <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, something else to do with money, although uh, I'm sure this isn't going to be in cash. Uh, the government handing out some bribes. Electricity love prices this. are going up and, and the government's saying, look, have some of your money back, although probably not in cash, right? Probably in electricity. Well, there's nothing better, than, nothing better than free money that the government has taken from you only to give it back and then say, vote for us because we're very kind. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Albanese's government, by the way, um, for the last two years, highest taxes ever on Australians. Our tax went up more than any other country. Most people paid 7% more tax 
They've since given us tax cuts, <laughs> saying, aren't we nice, we're giving you tax cuts. And now they're giving us $300 toward our electricity bills okay. after they were elected, promising to reduce electricity bills by 250 And everyone's has gone up by 1000 <laughs> so now they've given us back 300 and said, they're there, um, you should vote for us. We're really nice people. Uh, it's uh, it's an odd situation. But, hey, who doesn't want three bucks free money? $300 of free money, although the the maths doesn't work over time. I mean, that is more than what they promised to give back. 300 is more than 250 but not if your electricity bill has gone up like four times that within That's that right. same period of time, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a funny math, this one, because they did say like electricity bills would go down by 250 Uh Actually, they went up by 1000 and now they're putting $300. Not, they're not giving you $300, by the way. They're giving it to your electricity company. What? Which I suspect means all the electricity company will do is put the prices up, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'd do. If I ran oh, an my goodness. Company, I mean, who would let me run an electricity company, right? What do I know about power? So, so but, I mean, when the government's saying they're being generous without with, with your money, they're not necessarily mm-hmm. being generous to you. They're being generous to the electricity companies that are already already doing a bit of profit gouging by the looks of things. Totally. No, they're being very generous to your electricity company. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they're not going to trust you with $300, mate, because you, who knows what? You might take it out in cash. Yeah, <laughs> you might exactly. Just, then, you might stick it under the mattress. So, no, that's not going to happen. But they're somehow telling us, mate, that inflation isn't going to increase from this. Uh, and I'm not sure how because there's like three and a half billion new dollars in the Australian economy at the end of all this. So, yeah, I don't know how it works, but it's, it's funny money. Well, hey, I mean, maybe to, to go with the theme on this one, uh, it'll take a little bit of inflationary pressure off when the government no longer has a license to print money uh, because they're not printing it anymore. It's all digital, right? <laughs> it's digital. What are you? I don't even know how you print a digital dollar. Yeah, you just, <laughs> it'll be you interesting just to generate, watch. Yeah. You just hit, keep, hit, keep hitting the space bar when you print key, money. You know, a bunch of people in Canberra hitting keys. Is that, is that what you do? I think that's how it works. <laughs> hey, wanting to end with some good news on this one, and it's well, it's a little bit of a strange good news. You and I talked about this a couple of weeks back about this this bishop that was stabbed in Sydney. There seemed to be a yeah. lot of uh, stabbing going down in Sydney, an absolutely awful yeah. situation. But some good news from this, and this is a very Aussie thing to say. Apparently, the stab bishop said she'll be right. <laughs> He did, and uh, he said, I'll, I'll forgive you, and uh, I will forgive anyone who put you up to doing this. This is wow. a young boy who did this. And, uh, again, I just I love these stories because it, it really is the heart of the gospel, isn't it? And yeah. most of us, I try to put myself in that position and go, no, I would never forgive someone who stabbed me in the church. But you know what? I just think in the end, it, Christ forgives us as we are. And this beautiful man, good on him, yeah. uh, despite the fact this could have killed him, um, has gone ahead and said, hey, young man, I forgive you and I forgive anyone that put you up to this. Because it was part of it. It's been part of a wider youth problem in Australia with online, um, you know, kids getting, uh, you know, sort of brought into this sort of worldview uh, yeah. from from their online participation. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. But anyway, bless him that he's taken that approach and, and that's hope for redemption for all of us, but particularly for this young boy that's done this crime. Yeah, I mean, hey, a terrible situation, but nice to see, uh, well, church leadership in Australia hitting headlines for all the right reasons and, uh, well, preaching a message of love and forgiveness uh, rather than uh, some, some of the other messages that have been kicked around there. Hey, Craig, I don't know. I don't know if this is a bridge too far, but maybe, maybe you've got to apply that lesson of love and forgiveness to the Albanese government who stole all your money. It, it, you might uh, need to work on that. You might need yeah. to prayerfully consider that solution. <laughs> and if I had any money for them to steal, that, you know, that'd be something. But uh, unfortunately for me, I don't have that much money for them to steal. But I'm sure whatever I've got, mate, is going to go down to that wonderful hole called Canberra. Yeah. And it'll be turned into something digital anyway. Yeah. Okay. Very good indeed. Hey, thanks so, so much again for your time. Thanks for joining us today. God bless, mate. Great to see you. Take care. Thanks, Andrew. Bye. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.